Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about the rune shard changes that Riot introduced in the most recent patch of 14.2. I figured that these were pretty significant changes and they warranted a video on its own. I also will briefly cover the new rune unflinching at the end of the video. I just want to start off with a few disclaimers for this video. So it's getting harder and harder to generalize runes and items and rune shards now as well, which is probably by design by Riot, but I will try my best to generalize for you guys. In order to get the most out of your rune shards, there will always be some form of mixing and matching based on the situation. But if you're lost, here are my suggested paths and interpretations of the shards functions. Speaking of which, I want to start with the rune shards. And so what they did is they changed the second and the third branches here for the rune shards. The top branch has stayed the same and they removed the armor and magic resist option on the second branch for move speed and scaling health. And then they also removed the armor and magic resist option down on the third branch completely. And they kept the scaling health, but they did add flat health and some tenacity and slow resist. So you can't get flat resistances anymore in the rune shards. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the move speed one. So this is a little bit on the low side for numbers. So we'll just keep that in mind going forwards. And the flat health, this is 65 health. This is a little bit high in my opinion on the numbers side as well. So as much as I can talk about which situation fits the best, if the numbers aren't precisely balanced, then that's going to weigh an argument a little bit towards or away from those runes. The last little bit of context is the flat health gets outperformed by the scaling health from level seven and onwards. And so while that might sound like a relatively short amount of time, that actually is plenty of time to use those stats that the flat numbers are going to give you, especially as support if we're going to be roaming around and we're not really getting those levels too quickly. So there are going to be three main archetypes of rune shards that we can go for. The first archetype I want to talk about is roaming. And so if we are going to be roaming, then the rune shard setup that we can look for can be ability haste and then of course the move speed to help us roam around and then probably the health, uh, scaling health rune shard down here. And the reason that we would want to go this setup is because if we're roaming, then we're not dependent on stats for the lane, right? We can afford to go more greedy rune shards because we're relying on roaming away from lane and having a number advantage fights elsewhere. Ability haste is a lot greedier than the other options, even though it gives you immediate value. Ability haste is a scaling stat. Move speed to roam around more, and then of course the scaling health. Now we can go flat health if we need to just survive the few initial levels before we start roaming, but this is going to be your greediest setup if you are planning to end up leaving the lane. Now the next archetype that we're going to talk about is just scaling. So this isn't going to be too different to the roaming page, but for scaling, we're going to just go as much scaling as we think we can get away with. Some games is going to be triple greedy scaling here. Some games you might have to go flat health instead of the health scaling, but this is for when you don't plan on leaving bot lane, but you more so plan on just scaling up in the bot lane. Maybe freezing or turtling under your tower and really trying to get as strong as possible in the mid to late game. And finally, the last archetype is going to be early. And what we're going to look for in this one is we're either going to go adaptive force or attack speed, whichever seems more appropriate for our champion. And then most likely adaptive force, although we can kind of pick and choose between adaptive force and move speed, again, depending on our champion, alongside the flat health. So in order to know exactly which combination out of all of these shards to go, you're going to need some champion mastery. You're going to need to understand your champion's identity, their matchups, things like that. But we would opt in for this rune shard setup if we want to get as much value out of the early game as possible. Whether we feel like we need some stats to survive the enemy's threat or whether we want to dominate and snowball early as hard as possible. So just have a think about what your champion typically wants to do. And if you can assess in the moment, have a look at the enemy's champions, have a look at your champions and then make an assessment whether your approach still makes the most sense in this game. So now I want to move on to talking about some general setups and I want to give another word of caution here that there is going to be a degree of personal preference to these rune shards. There's going to be a degree of it just being harder to generalize like I mentioned and also situation dependent. Some games you can afford to go greedier, some games you have to opt in for more early stats. But let's talk about a general enchanter page. And so we would go ability haste and then there's going to be a lot of flexibility in this model branch. If we're playing a champion like Janna or Soraka, we might be more inclined to go the move speed option. 
if we are playing a champion like Renata, we might even consider a health scaling option. Otherwise, for the most part, we're probably going adaptive force so that our heals and our shields are going to be doing more. And then we're going to back it up with typically flat health. This is going to be situational as well. If you verse high threat, if you need the health pools to stay alive early so that you can actually get into the mid to late game when enchanters really thrive, take the flat health. If you think you can make it through the early game in one piece and you can read for the scaling health, go for this. I will say that people take this option too often, so I would recommend you just try out both of them and see how they feel. But like I said, the numbers for the flat health is really strong and it's just performing better in general than the scaling option. Okay, and so that was the general enchanter rune shard setup. Let's move on to a general engager page. This is going to be a little bit harder to generalize, unfortunately, but we'll give it a go. So we're probably going to go either attack speed or ability haste, depending on if your champion likes weaving in some auto attacks and you want a little bit more early threat where attack speed will be valuable. For attack speed, we would consider champions like Nautilus, Rel, and even Leona. And for other situations, maybe like Alistor, if we just want to scale up a little bit more, we go ability haste. For the second branch here, we're mostly going to stick to move speed. I'm not a fan of adaptive force on many engagers, but if you do want to snowball early on, again, Champions like Nautilus and Leona especially are going to enjoy the adaptive force. And Nautilus doesn't necessarily love move speed as much as other champions because he has that range and that safety that these other engagers don't. But it's going to be between one of these two to help you achieve your identity and have some more threat rather than the scaling up and trying to be tanky. And then for the lower branch down here, we should go flat health most of the time. Against range supports, we want to be able to engage and having that flat health as a buffer is going to help us. If we verse other engagers, then we're going to be butting heads a lot when we really want that flat health. I don't think that there are going to be too many situations where we want this tenacity and slow resist. If you think of some engaged champions like Nautilus or like Rel, we can chuck Rakan in there as well. They can either buffer their spells through CC or they have mobility of their own. And so there's not the strongest argument for this rune, but also if we're choosing this rune here, we would have to be choosing it over this rune here, which is going to be performing very well with that flat health. But of course, if you think that you can still achieve your identity, still make progress in the early lane while having scaling health instead, go for it. Just be cautious when making that decision. Otherwise, typical page, probably something like this. Moving on to the general rune shard setup for mages. And so we're probably going to go something like double adaptive into either health or scaling health. So the double adaptive, your job as a mage support is not to have really high uptime and provide utility, it's to deal as much damage as possible and use your early strength. So we're going to take double adaptive for that reason. Um, you can kind of choose between move speed and adaptive. Sometimes it can be annoying as a mage when you're so incredibly immobile and there are fights going on all over the place that you just can't get to. So maybe if your games are a little bit faster paced, then move speed can have a stronger argument, but it's, this is going to be the typical set up double adaptive and then choose between health and scaling health. Most likely flat health versus melee supports and scaling health versus ranged. And last but not least, we are going to go with the Warden setup. This is going to be champions like Braun, Tarn, Tarek. We can chuck Galio in there as well. Any kind of melee support that is more about peeling and being defensive rather than roaming around and making things happen. We're gonna choose between attack speed and ability haste depending on what your champions prefer. Braum and Tarm like to have that attack speed. Tarek and Galio and maybe a, a front to back peeling Alistair would prefer the ability haste. And then we're going to go the scaling health because like we said, the move speed is not as important on our champion because we're grouping up and letting the enemy engage into us instead of roaming and fighting as much. And then pick your poison here between health and scaling health. If you can get away with it, Go scaling, don't underestimate the flat values that this health can give you though. Okay, so there was a general guide for the classes. I wanna talk about some champions that really do have a lot of flexibility in their role in a game. For lack of a better term, I'm just going to call them shapeshifters for now. And the most obvious one is going to be Jana. So what Jana can do is that she can um, play to dominate the 2v2 lane, she can play to roam around, and she can also play to scale up in a 2v2 lane. As long as you know what each of these rune shards give you, and as long as you appreciate that we shouldn't 
build the same rune shard setup every single time. We want to just take into account what we expect the game to look like then we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. But let's talk about the 2v2 domination for Jaina. She could potentially go double adaptive flat health. She could go adaptive move speed flat health, but this is just going to be when Jaina wants to dominate lane when she has a really good matchup and she has a lot of freedom to poke and use her auto attacks and her W to make progress. This is also going to be backed up by your items and your runes. I don't know how far I want to go down that rabbit hole. Now this is only talking about the rune shards. If we are choosing the 2v2 domination versus the roaming identity, then our itemization and our general runes would all change as well. So I don't have time to just go over every single iteration for every different champion, but I think it's worth just mentioning that everything is going to kind of align towards a single identity. For roaming, we would go ability haste, move speed, and then uh, scaling health if we can get away with it. And then for scaling up in the 2v2 sense, probably ability haste into move speed into one of the two, just the runes and items are gonna be a bit different. Another example, Alistair, he can go for the roaming setup, which would be something like this, versus the front to back scaling setup, which would be something like this or this. Last example, Rakan can go for a tanky setup, tanky and scaling, something like this, or he can go for a more uh, greedy build with a higher utility and uptime, and that could look something like this with move speed and some flat health, but he also might want to opt in for some adaptive force because he uses AP quite well, especially if he wants to have more impactful skirmishes. So the TLDR is we're really going to have to engage our brains with runes and with items in the new season. I know it might sound daunting, but we can get excited by all of the options as well. You can express your creativity and your game understanding, and we can just try to have fun playing around with all of these different shards. Okay, and finally, we're going to move on to the unflinching rune. So this was a replacement of the previous unflinching, which gave tenacity and slow resist the lower that you got in the runes, and that tenacity and slow resist, like we saw, was moved into the rune shards instead. When I initially heard the proposal of this rune, I thought, that doesn't sound too good. It better have some really high numbers to make it actually balanced. And it is comically low in terms of the numbers. So I would, I would really stay away from this rune when possible. You only get two scaling up towards 10 armor and magic resist when you are CC'd. And for two seconds after, this is ridiculously low. And so instead, if we are going to go into the resolve tree, which has a lot of fantastic branches over here, then if we can make use of revitalize, we would want to do that instead. Otherwise, if we can make use of overgrowth, if we're not roaming around too much, we can go that. So a champion like Rakan would be more than happy to go revitalize as he has heals and shields, whereas a champion like Leona would get almost no value out of revitalize and then overgrowth. You kind of want to be roaming around a bit more and then unflinching is bad. So what this might do is it might shift our keystone from Aftershock to Glacial a little bit more. Now, the reason that I think that Glacial has been struggling a little bit in Season 14, and actually ever since some of the Inspiration Tree nerfs later on in Season 13, is because they nerfed Futures Market, and now they have removed Stopwatch, which is a great room for some supports to take. So even though the Keystone of Glacial is as good as ever, it's the branches that are going to really inform our decision, because it's a huge commitment to go a Keystone just for a Keystone and not to have too much value on the rest of the branches. And the Revitalize, sorry, the Resolve Tree has fantastic branches down here for tankiness. Whereas the Keystones are leaving a little bit to be desired. So that's all that I wanted to talk about today. I'm sorry I couldn't summarize all of the changes a little, a little bit more neatly and tidily for you guys, but it would be a bit disingenuous of me to say, here's one build and this is going to serve you well, go for it. Either way, I hope you learned something and you got some food for thought from this video. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing and commenting as this really does help my channel grow. To level up your gameplay and mentality, visit my website schoolofsupport.gg. The link is going to be down in the description below.